How are you all doing tonight? My name is Big Bombed Boy and welcome to a Death Knight's Guide to Pre-Raid Biss DPS Edition. So as is always the case, Pre-Raid Biss lists are different than other Biss lists. There is sort of an absolute Biss list and a pretty static one for DK, but it's nearly worthless. Pre-Raid Biss is to get you ready for raids as soon as possible. And you'll be in raids getting P1 Biss before you'd ever complete a pre-raid Biss list. Especially in Wrath, now that you have 10 and 25 and how easy the first phase of raids are. So what I'm going to do here is go slot by slot. For each slot, I'll talk about what is usually the absolute Biss first. Then work our way down to other very good, perfectly okay alternatives, even if not absolute Biss. And we'll also compare the Absolute Biss vs. a list of easy to get alternatives, while also making note of Frost vs. Unholy DPS, and Two Hand vs. One Hand when necessary. With all that said, tip to butt. Helm. Without a doubt, Spiked Titan Steel Helm is the best pre Biss option. That is an absolute ass load of strength, but it's going to be expensive. This is a blacksmith made BOE and it takes four Titan Steel bars. Titan Steel would have been pretty cheap, but there was a hotfix on the first that put the cooldown back on Titan Steel. A lot of people are going to want this. It's time gated. It will not be cheap for a while. My recommendation on what to use in the meantime is charged titanium specs if you're an engineer. Not quite as good as Spiked Helm, but it's not massively far behind and it doesn't require any Titan Steel. If you're not an engineer, Chitin Shell Great Helm. This drops from Anubarak in Heroic Azul Narub, so it's pretty easy to get. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of other good helms out there. A ton of them have no meta socket, which we absolutely want. Our meta gem of choice is the Relentless Earth Siege Diamond. The other gems, full strength 99% of the time. Unless there's a really good socket bonus, like in the Kaiten Helm, you can put an orange gem in there or your enchanted tier if it's the only good socket bonus. Our helm enchant is going to be Arcanum of Torment, which is from Knights of the Ebonblade. I'm pretty sure you do have to do the quest line in Ice Crown before you can see the vendor and buy the Tabard because it's phased, if you happen to be having trouble finding that. Necklace. Okay, we're getting into some contentious shit real quick here with necklaces. Titanium Impact Choker. Crafted by JC, Titanium Earth Guard Chain, also crafted by JC. Gold Amulet of Kings from King Yumeron Yumeron in UP Heroic. These are the ones you're going to see recommended. If we compare Titanium Earth Guard Chain to Gold Amulet of Kings, even though it's a tank piece, once you put a gem in there, it is higher DPS, but only by an extremely small amount, to the point that Unless it's almost free, or you have it for tanking, you can just ignore Titanium Earth Guard. Titanium Impact Choker, though, is a solid upgrade over Amulet, usually. It's more of an upgrade for Frost than Unholy, but it is still an upgrade for both in most situations. Even though it's not P1 Biss, if the price isn't super high, I would consider picking it up, but it wouldn't be the first thing I spend my gold on. Shoulders. For once, the best option is actually really easy to get. Spalders of the Giant Lords. This is from Sons of Hodir Rep. Requires Revered. You're going to get that rep. You have to do Hodir Rep to get your shoulder enchants anyway. Snake Den Spalders from Heroic Gundrak. Dropping from Sladrin. Are going to pull ahead if you're unholy though. Spalders of Elders Square are BOE drop from Caverns of Time Strat. They're behind the other ones. They're alright to use in the meantime while you're working on that rep. There's also Pauldrons of Berserking. These are not really pre-raid, but if you happen to have them from doing pre-patch raids, they are still really good if you put Wrath Gems in them. And as mentioned, our Shoulder Enchant is from Sons of Hodir. Unless you've leveled Inscription, but I'm not going to mention every profession enchant. 
If you've leveled a profession, you should know when it's better than the basic enchant. Because that's the case like 92.3% of the time. Nice. Cape. Alright, cape is a strange one. It's Cloak of Bloodied Waters. By a lot. This thing is excellent for blue. We can almost call it dope shit. But it's a BOE. And it's going to be in high demand. So unless the drop rate on this ends up being extraordinary... It could be pretty expensive. I do think it's a zone exclusive drop, only dropping in gun track. Now, some people in Original Wrath reported it dropping in normal, but Wowhead says only in heroic, so it's possible you could just pick this up while doing a gun drag. The bad thing is there are no other good options. I would just grab something like Shroud of Reverberation from Vulcan and Halls of Lightning Heroic, and use that until you get bloody waters. There's really just no other option. Bloody waters is extremely good. Chest. Alright, another simple one that doesn't cost a shitload of gold. Our prebis chest is tier. So in Wrath, there's two pieces of tier you can buy with badges. These are the 10 man versions. Chest and gloves. I guess spoiler for gloves section, but we want both of these. Not only is the tier chest just really good, the two set is also not bad. Now, what will you use until you get the 80 badges to buy the chest? Bone Grinder Breastplate from Prince Does Get Rammed and On Cahed is the best option, and it's not particularly hard to get. There are a few other close ones. Engraved Chestplate of Ek in Heroic Gundrak is not bad if your gearing progression has taken you out of that piss colored sea of hit. And we might see this chest again later. There's also Wing Commander's Breastplate from Normal Oculus. It's almost the same thing as Ek, just slightly worse. Our chest enchant is going to be plus 10 all stats. Bracers. Hell yeah, another easy slot. Vengeance Bindings. These are really good. They're BOE, not even expensive to craft. Probably the easiest slot for DK Prebis. But if you want to complicate shit, then fine. Bands of the Stone Forge, dropping in Halls of Stone Heroic. As long as it's not going to ruin your hit, which is a definite possibility, these are fairly good for Unholy. If you're Unholy in these drop, I would take them over Vengeance Bindings, but I wouldn't really go out of my way to hunt them down. And our Bracer Enchant is going to be 50 AP. Gloves. Kind of gave this one away already. Yeah. But it's the tier gloves from badges. They're a bit cheaper than the chest at 60 badges. So what do you use until you have the badges? Actually, gloves are busy as shit. There's a ton of good ones. Gauntlets of Dragonwrath from Heroic Oculus. Not as good as tier, but these are fairly good. The hit can be very useful. Hard Corium Battle Fists. These are a some well crafted item, so if you got them in the pre patch, they'll last you until tier just fine. And Gauntlets of the Culling. You'll get these for doing the Stratholm quest. They're fine enough to use until tier gloves or Dragon Wrath. Crusher is going to be your glove enchant, but you're probably an engineer, so it'd be the haste buff. Belt. Another badge item, this time costing 40 badges, Verdungo's Barbarian Cord. It's called Cord, but it is in fact Plate. Good socket bonus, so it's another contender for your tier. Belts to use until Verdungo's. There are some decent mail and leather options like Treasure Seeker's Belt, but since this is a badge item, while it's not your first purchase, it's an item you know you'll get. So, I wouldn't spend a lot of time or gold for items you're going to quickly replace. Something like the General Steel Girdle from Halls of Lightning Heroic, or Strategist Belt from Prince Kelisith and Heroic Utgard Keep. Those will be just fine until you get the badges. And our belt enchant is... Well, it's not really an enchant, but put a belt buckle on there. Legs. Pants... Not too bad, actually. So our best is going to be Staggering Leg Plates from Ingvar in Heroic Utgard Keep. Kind of why I also recommended that belt just a minute ago. You'll just find that while farming for these pants. 
damn, they are pretty nice pants. A ton of strength and two sockets for even more strength. Mmm. Until then, you do have options. Leg plates of Blood Reprisal, while not as good, are from Worm Rest Rep Exalted. Rep is easy as hail to farm and wrap. So if you don't have staggering after you finished your other reps, you can get these. There's also leg plates of steel implants from Heroic Calling of Strat. These are not as good as the other options, but they're fine enough to hold you over until you get those other ones. Leg enchant is ice scale leg armor. If anyone actually levels leatherworking to make it. Boots. Alright. Boots are annoying. For me, more than you. There are two really good boots. Death Inured Sabatons and the Obliterator Greaves. Now, the name is amazing. Obliterator Greaves. They can be slightly better than Death Inured, but they can be very irritating to get. They drop in Violet Hold Heroic. If you've ever done Violet Hold before, you know there's an ass load of bosses and they spawn at random. So you could do it 10 times and the boss that drops these boots never shows up. Death and Yuri are from Exalted Ebon Blade. You're going to farm Ebon Blade rep anyway for the Helm Enchant and some other things. As far as interim pieces go, there's not a lot. Spiked Titan Steel Treads are good, but unless you're watching this in 2023 or some shit, the cost performance just isn't there. Rift Striders from Nexus Heroic are probably your best bet. Our boot enchant is Cat Swiftness, or if you're an engineer, you want the Discord sponsored enchant, Nitro Boosts. Rings. Yeah, we got some we got some options. Nice. Options. I like options. Ring of the Kirin Tor. This is a good ring, and the teleport is really cool, but it is expensive. 6,800 gold at Exalted. If you're going to buy this anyway for the teleport, it is a good ring, and it will get upgraded over time, but it's not P1 Bis. I'm definitely not going to buy it. Slightly below the KT ring is Titanium Impact Band. This is also not P1 Bis, but... It shouldn't be too expensive for too long. I would probably try to grab this one. It's also made by JC. In third place is Hemorrhaging Circle from Galdara and Gundrak Heroic. This is a pretty good piece, and you're going to be in Gundrak for other things anyway. I would use this as long as you're not going to waste that expertise. For interim slash easy to get pieces, Band of Frosted Thorns from Heroic Nexus. This is actually pretty decent. I wouldn't mind wearing this. And there's also Ring of Scarlet Shadows. It's crafted and it should be, should be, pretty cheap. It's actually really strong if you're down on hit. Trinkets. So you know how a lot of stuff has been BOE and been really expensive? Well, I've got good news for you. Good news if you buy gold anyway. Dark Moon card greatness is pre-bis and P1-bis. This trinket is excellent, you'll be using it for donkey's ears, but it's wanted by a lot of classes and you have to put together a nobles deck to turn it into the fair to get it. This will not be cheap at all. If you have an inscription alt or something, that would help. We'll talk a little bit more about this later. For the second slot, Meteorite Whetstone is probably your best option. It's really good, really easy to get, and drops from King Ymirin and Utgard Pinnacle Heroic, and he drops other things we want, so nice. Third best would be to go in Sizor Fragment. Drops from King Dread and Heroic Gundrak. Very, very easy to get. This is obviously better for Frost, though. If you got Shard from Heroic Magisters or Berserker's Call from ZA, those are also still decent enough to use as interim pieces. There is also Mirror of Truth from Badges. It's all right but not amazing i think whetstone is better there are also just better things to spend your badges on like the belt and the tier if you've bought all the other stuff with badges and are still using an old trinket by that point for some reason then it could be worth it sigils sigils are um, a bit shit not gonna lie if you're unholy sigil of the wild buck is best it's from the pvp area in grizzly hills if you're Frost, you can buy Sigil of Haunted Dreams for 15 badges. Neither of these are very impressive. And there are no other good ones to get on the way to these. You'll just use your starter Sigil until you get one of these. 
weapons. Weapons are a bit complex. Let's try and break it down. For two-handed unholy, Titan Steel Destroyer is the best option. It's crafted and it needs Titan Steel. So yeah, that won't be super cheap. But there is another option. If the hit is being wasted on the mace, Colossal Skull Clad Cleaver will pull ahead, even though it has less strength. Even if you're not an orc. Obviously, neither are P1 Bis, and you probably won't end up at a point where you're wasting that hit because most pre Bis gear just doesn't have hit. While not my number one priority, I would try to buy Titan Steel. But if that's not possible, Colossal Skull Clad Cleaver is still really good. Drops from Loken in Halls of Lightning Heroic. What about Dual Wield Unholy? If you're using Scourge Strike, Titan Steel, Bone Crusher, it's expensive. So use Reaper of Dark Souls in the meantime. It's Ebon Blade rep, you're going to get that anyway. Offhand doesn't matter as much. If you've got the badges, Grass Cutter is going to be good. If you don't, Reaper of Dark Souls, again. It's actually not unique. Weapon enchants are always going to be Fallen Crusader on the main hand or a two-hand weapon. For the offhand, you can do Black Magic. Haste is just really strong for Unholy. And the Frost Weps are basically the same as Unholy Dual Wield. Two Reaper of Dark Souls and put a Titan Steel Bone Crusher in the main hand once you can afford it. The weapon enchants though are a little bit different for Frost. You want Fallen Crusader and Razor Ice. People usually say Razor Ice on the main hand and Fallen Crusader on the off hand, but I would play around with that. They're free, so why not? All right, now let's talk about the absolute bis list versus an easy in slot. Here's a look at absolute bis first. Now let's compare that to easy in slot, specifically for unholy two hand. Easy in slot takes out the most expensive items and the hardest to get items, except for potentially the cape. There's just no real way to replace that. So what is the difference here in DPS? It's about 10%. That's big. 10% is a lot of DPS, but the easy and slot gear is still way more than enough to get you into raids, which is the main point of pre bis Sims aren't perfect by any means, but just to put into perspective how small some of these upgrades you could spend tens of thousands of gold on are, if you buy just the trinket, the difference in DPS between the two sets goes down to about 5%. I definitely know where my goal is going. If I'm buying any BOEs at all, it is the trinket. It's the biggest upgrade out of all of them by quite a lot. Okay, I couldn't leave it, so I went back and ran the numbers for Frost as well. They're actually very close to Unholy. Easy in slot is still about 10% less, but the trinket isn't as big of a chunk. It is still the highest DPS gain of any one piece by a lot, even over the crafted mace but things are spread around a bit more for Frost. All life must end. And that pretty much covers DK Pre-Bis DPS Edition. Did you guys have fun leveling your DK in the pre-patch? I sure as shit did. That was fun. I went more and just AoE'd mobs down. It was beautiful. I'm not sure when the next DK video will be. Maybe Phase 1 Bis in a few weeks. This video took way longer than I thought it would to make. I haven't done a pre biz video in a while, but I've got another really dope video coming next week, and then probably Hunter pre biz after that. If you enjoyed the video, hit that sub button, bell, like button, that trinket is too goddamn expensive button, share button, all that other shit. I appreciate each and every one I get. This channel even has memberships now. You can check them out by clicking the join button right by the sub button. I stream right here on YouTube sometimes. I hope you'll join me. But that is going to be all for this one. I really appreciate you all watching and I will see you all for the next one. The Amulet of Kings is ancient. Saint Alicia herself received it from the gods. It is a holy relic of great power.